In 2016, cross-border e-commerce sales accounted for 15% of total global e-commerce sales. That means people ordering from one country, uh, but getting products sent from another country, from a brand in another country. In 2022, that number is projected to jump to 22%. That means the world is buying, and they're not just buying from companies in their own country. They're buying from co companies anywhere in the world that can get them the products that they want and or need in the time frame that they want or need at the cost that they want or need. So this poses the question, are you looking globally for revenue opportunities for your brand? Let's get into it. Hey everyone, I'm John Timmerman. Today we're talking international SEO as a way to support the growth of your business globally. Now, I want to address the elephant in the room here is that uh, uh, global supply chain is currently pretty effed, if you ask me, and pretty much everybody else. Uh, there's a worker shortage um, for actual pilots and captains and drivers and people to actually get products from A to B. So that's issue number one. Issue number two is costs are all over the place. Inflation and uh, fuel costs are causing co overall shipping costs to go up and it's changing costs for suppliers because they need to get the products or the raw materials to make the things and so their costs go up. Everybody's costs are going up and everything is delayed. But with this massive problem is coming massive solutions. So we are seeing technologies like 5G making tech, making software and processes so much faster. So that will start to creep in, already is starting to creep into the logistics and supply chain to make things happen faster. AI is automating things so that they don't actually need, people don't actually need, businesses don't actually need people for some of these processes because robots and software and AI are doing it for them. So out of this problem is going to come massive opportunity for speed and efficiency in logistics. That means that your brand is probably going to be able to sell things in a lot of different countries other than your own, just as efficiently as you have been able to do in your own country in the past. Um, I know for sure that companies in the U.S. can sell at least cross border to uh, to countries like Canada and Mexico, Mexico, if nothing else, through Amazon. Amazon is is sort of combining their logistics powerhouse to allow U.S. brands to sell in Canada and Mexico relatively easily, and it's only going to expand beyond there. Similar, there's partnerships kind of in the works between the U.S. and Brazil to be able to do the same thing through Amazon. And all the other competitors to Amazon, like Walmart and Shopify, are looking into similar opportunities to, to expand their clients' ability to sell in other countries. So how do you go about doing this? Well, after you've figured out all the logistics pieces, which is going to be an ongoing beast, but the brands that are paying attention now and setting themselves up for the success are the ones that are going to be generating millions of dollars in revenue from other countries in the next one, two, three, five, ten 10 years, right? So after you figure that out, then you want to go to the most basic modern marketing uh, tactic beyond just brand building, and that is SEO, right? Brand building's number one, because if you have a great brand, people will go find you wherever you are. Right? So you don't have to try as hard to sell when you've got an amazing brand people love. But after that, SEO is the most powerful because it's an efficient way to market, meaning you put costs into building your SEO value and program, and it stays there for the long haul. It's not like advertising where when you stop spending ad dollars, those ads go away. Right. So building SEO value, that means working on your website, uh, We'll talk about this in a little bit, but as it relates to international SEO, uh, it involves possibly building multiple sites or different sections of your site. And it international SEO goes beyond, actually SEO goes beyond just Google. SEO now should look at pl other, the other top search engines that are not typical search engines. You've got Google is clearly by a long shot the number one global search engine. Um, in almost every country except for China and Russia, uh, Google is number, the number one search engine. And beyond that, number two, you have another Google-owned search engine that's 
YouTube is the number two, at least in the U.S. And then you have Amazon as an additional uh, uh, search engine, which I think currently is in number three, and that's when people want to search for products, right? So Google, search for information. Uh, YouTube, search for videos. Uh, Amazon, search for products. So here you've got the top three search engines that you can use to be successful here in the U.S. and globally. So let's look at international SEO. So international SEO, what is it? It's no different than national SEO. It's no different than, than SEO you would do in the United States or SEO that you would do in Brazil or SEO that you would do in Canada. A lot of the, 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 the triggers and the algorithms are, are similar. They're looking for keywords. They're looking for valuable listings, product listings or information listings, right? And they determine this by activity, maybe reviews or sales if it's a product, um, uh, uh, backlinks if it's a information, a piece of information or a product. They're looking for how other people value this particular link or page. That's it in a nutshell. There's, of course, lots of details that need to be worked through both in national or domestic SEO as well as international. But the different with it, difference with international SEO is that you have things that are different, like cultures and languages. So that's what I want to address in this video. And if you want to go into depth, even deeper into how to start international SEO or the concerns that you should have or the pros and the cons, head over to my blog, jtimmerman.com. I wrote an article on there with a detailed explanation of international SEO. Um, you can also check it out on my LinkedIn newsletter. Just find me on LinkedIn, John Timmerman. But international SEO, you're basically looking at two major differences, and that is the cultural context and the language. So uh, when you're building your website, whether it's a WordPress website, whether it's a Shopify website, you need to address the the most important thing first, and that is if you're moving into another country, you're trying to generate sales in another country, and you're looking at your website and or you're looking at platforms to use, they need to translate into a language that they understand. So we'll skip by the English-speaking countries because that's easy if you're coming from the U.S., and uh, looking to another country. If it's English, you can just duplicate your content over on, uh, let's say, Amazon, okay? If it's a, a, a non-English speaking country or a, a country that has a significant non-English speaking population, then you need to translate it. Please do not use auto translators to do this uh, as the final copy that's posted because it will miss, whether it's an AI translation or Google Translate or something like that, they're going to miss cultural context. They're going to miss nuances of you don't really say that in this language, right? It might be direct translation, but it misses some of those nuances. So please hire a professional translator to translate it into their native language in most cases. Hire a native uh, person to translate it and ha make sure that they're reviewing the copy for cultural context. Um, for instance, in France, food is such an important part of their culture. They they value it. It's 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 so valuable uh, that if you if you say in France that you want to put ketchup on something that's like a really well plated meal or something like that, that's very frowned upon, right? In the U.S., we put ketchup on everything. It wouldn't shock you if somebody put ketchup on uh, pasta. I mean, maybe it would, but it's borderline offensive in France, right? So if your listing has to do with food and you're saying like, oh, goes, ketchup goes great with this thing, that might not be cultural relevant, right? You don't put ketchup on, on well-plated French cuisine. Uh, so cultural context. Have a, a professional translator translate your content for Amazon or, or, or whatever platform it is. That includes your website. Have a professional translator translate the language that you have from English to French or uh, uh, Spanish or whatever it might be, but then also have them rewrite sections to make sure that it is culturally relevant. So that's the first thing with international SEO is to make sure that you're translating it into a language that is not only legible for them, uh, for the language they speak, but also relevant to the culture that they're living. Number two is for search engines, uh, there's a few different approaches you can take. You have a website let's say, right? Your website's set up, you're selling in the U.S., and you want to uh, expand into Mexico, let's say. So Mexico, you want to translate it to Spanish. You want to make sure it's culturally re relevant. But 
do you duplicate your website and make another one in Spanish? Do you create a page on your website that's in Spanish? Do you create a subdomain on your website, which is sort of like a domain within the domain on your website, that, and that's your Spanish site? Well, the short answer is, is you can do any of them. Um, actually, I missed one super common fix that is not a good one, and that is to simply install a software or plugin on your website that auto-translates your site. So uh, out of these options, you can let's look at the first the, the last one that I just mentioned, auto translation. The problem with auto translation is just what I mentioned before. It's just going to literally translate the copy. It might not be culturally relevant. It might tr not translate everything correctly. And so if somebody is viewing your content in Mexico and they're reading in Spanish and it's got all sorts of grammar errors and syntax errors and it, it's not really culturally relevant, relevant they're not going to have a lot of trust in your brand. And chances are they're going to look for another brand that is more native to their culture and, and, and language, right? So let's skip the auto translators. Next, let's look at setting up a brand new website. So you'd set up a new website. Let's say your website is xyz.com in the US. So you would, uh, if you set up a new website with a new domain, you're going to look at, uh, you're going to be, you're going to be using xyz.com.mx, I believe, for Mexico. Uh, new domain. It's an MX domain, so when people search in Mexico through Google, that will show up first because it's a it's a it's a it's a um, geolocated website. It's one that's you know, close proximity to to Mexico. Um, so that's another option. That's actually the best option, but the downside is you need the resources to be able to build it. You need somebody to build another website for you. You need to have somebody who's going to translate that website. You need to make sure all the images and pictures are culturally relevant. So it's a lot of time and resources and most likely money, but that's the best to do. Uh, and that doesn't even include maintaining that website. You're going to need somebody to maintain your, your home base website here in the U.S. And you're going to need somebody to maintain your Mexico website. And that doesn't include if you're expanding to other countries, but it's still the best option because you're building a brand new website that is focused specifically on that culture. You can't really get any better than that. Uh, the next option we're gonna look at is to create a page or several pages on your website. Now this is okay uh, and, and could work, but it's not the best. It's not the best to, to uh, send signals to Google and, and have their algorithm crawl because it's only a, sort, a certain section of your website and it may confuse Google's al algorithm. Like, is this an American site? Is this a Mexican site? You know, uh, who, who, which pages do I rank for what? So it's just gonna send more signals to Google that may be confusing than having two separate sites. So if you're looking at these two options, uh, the separate site is definitely the best. The having a, a several pages on your website may be relevant if you're just dabbling in the Mexican market and you're just starting out and you want to get some pages to rank, you might want to go there. But you might want to do something that's in the middle, and that is to create subdomain. Um, so you might do something like xyz.com slash Mexico or, or slash MX, right? And when they go to that domain, a new website that lives on xyz.com shows up and it's the same structure and website, but it's a website within a website. And so now there's more content to send signals to Google that all of these parts of the website over here belong in Mexican search results, right? So that's a way to sort of get the best of both worlds. It's a little bit easier because you don't have to build a brand new website. You do have to expand your current website and you still do have to have somebody manage that, but they can manage it all in the same platform. So it's probably gonna be the same team. You still need a translator to come in and make sure that all the copy is culturally relevant and grammatically correct, but it's generally a little bit easier to manage. It's on the same domain, it's on the same platform, um, and, and generally the same team can manage it. But you can still target and focus your key words and key phrases in the Spanish language on that section of your site, and Google will still crawl it and see that this section belongs in Mexican search results. So that's generally the best way, uh, the best ways 
to approach international SEO. Of course, there's lots of details uh, that I'm not going to go into right now because if you're watching this, most likely you're a founder or an owner or CEO or CMO or something like that. And you're going to have to either bring somebody on internally, use your current team or hire an agency to do some of this SEO stuff for you. But it's important that you know how to approach this global expansion and domination that I know you're going to have over the next several years. So international SEO, it's one of the best ways to set up the foundation for getting your brand exposed to other cultures when they are searching for the thing that you offer. So once you've set up your shipping and logistics, your partners and things like that, which is getting more and more, I don't want to say easy because it's not easy, but it's becoming more and more doable in today's day and age through technology and speed. And uh, we'll see a lot of these logistics and global supply chain issues be resolved over the next year or two, uh, uh, um, as said by uh, data and analysts and, and forecasts. And once that happens and you're set up, the next thing you need to do is make sure that your brand gets out there. So rather than starting with that big advertising campaigns that are super expensive in other countries that you don't understand, start with SEO so that when people are searching for a product that you offer, you show up, uh, they can read your content on your site or on Amazon, see that you're a legit company and you're a great brand, make a purchase, and you can start generating revenue in many other countries. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. I talk about e-commerce. I talk about uh, marketing and sales strategy. And you're going to see me talking a lot more about AR and v VR, uh, augmented reality and virtual reality. Um, uh, what, our company recently purchased a company called GFX that does uh, AR and VR technology. I'm super into it. And we're going to start seeing this a lot in all of your industries, whether it be you know shopping a pair of sneakers to see what they look like on your foot. On, on the internet before you make a purchase uh, to uh, you know real estate shopping and car shopping and things like that. We're going to start to see augmented reality really play a big part and virtual reality really play a big part in consumerism. And uh, I'm going to be talking about it a lot more. So subscribe to this channel if you're interested in all that. Uh, share this with your friends, colleagues, your boss, whoever might be interested. And uh, I'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching.